Margarita. I work it down here. Um, I am a Cornell student, and I am a scientist that works with bees. So I have come today to share with you a little bit of what I know about bees, and I'm going to start by telling you a story about how I got into studying bees and how I became a bee scientist. When I was about your age, I was really, really scared of animals. I didn't like insects at all. I grew up in a city where I didn't have a lot of contact with nature, so I was really scared of the things that I didn't know. But at school, my favorite subject was always science, and especially biology. So when I decided to go to college, I decided to study biology. And at that time, I took a class about insects. And for that class, we went to the Amazon rainforest to, to see insects in nature. So one day, I was walking with the, the rest of my, my colleagues uh, in the forest, and suddenly I see this huge, green, shiny insect on the ground. So I picked it up, and I didn't know what it was. So I went running to my professor and asked him what that was. And he told me that that was a bee. I was like, I'm so shocked because I always thought that bees were, you know, like about these big and had only stripes on their abdomen, and I didn't know that they could have colors like green. So since then, since that day, I have been really interested in bee diversity and all the different kinds of bees that there are in the world. Bees, like any other insect, have three main body parts. They have a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. On the head, they have two antennae, and they have two good compound eyes that they use to actually see images. On the thorax, they have three pairs of legs, so a total of six legs, and two pairs of wings. And on the tip of the abdomen, female bees have a stinger. All female bees actually can sting multiple times, except for the honeybee that loses the stinger every time that they sting. So what are the differences between wasps and bees? There are a few morphological differences. Bees tend to be a lot hairier and chubbier. And wasps are a lot slender and they have less hair. There are also differences in their behavior. Bees are less aggressive than wasps. And there are differences in their diet too. Bees exclusively feed on plant material. So they feed on pollen and nectar from, from flowers. Instead, wasps are carnivores. They hunt other insects. So if you're out with your family on a sunny day having a picnic and you're eating a turkey sandwich and you have a bug flying around you, probably what is flying around you is a wasp that is after the turkey in your turkey sandwich. Instead, if you're drinking a really, really sweet soda and you have um, bug flying around you, that is probably a bee that is going after the sugar in your soda. So we um, just learned something about bee morphology and the differences between wasps and bees. So now I want you to take a look at this box of insects and tell me what they are. So the first one is a bee, it's a honeybee. Um, so it has a lot of hairs and it has four wings. The second one is a wasp. It doesn't have hair, but it has four wings. The third one is a fly, because it only has two wings. The fourth one is very easy. It's a bumblebee. It is very chubby and hairy, so that's a bee too. Number five is another fly that has two wings only. And number six, it's a tiny bee. It's um, a lot smaller than, than a bumblebee, but it's also a bee. It has four wings and a lot of hair. So another difference between flies and bees is that bees have chewing mouth parts and flies have sucking mouth parts. So bees come in different sizes and colors. I want you to take a look at this box that is showing you a lot of the diversity of bees. Down here, we have a honeybee. That is the most common bee uh, around this area. But all of these insects are also bees. 
you can see that there is different in size. This can be as large as this carpentry bee or as small as this sweat bee. And they come also in very different colors. So they can have uh, patterns, striped patterns like these ones, or they can come in different colors like red, here, purple, blue, and even green. So here is another interesting fact about bees. 90% of the 20,000 species of bees worldwide are actually solitary. That means that they don't live in big groups like the honeybee, that is a social species. So in the spring, adult females come out and they start foraging for pollen and nectar in flowers and they bring all of that food underground into their nest. They form a pollen ball and they lay an egg on top of the pollen ball. And that egg starts feeding on that, and then it develops into an adult. So they try to get pollen from the flowers. And what happens is that when they visit the flowers, they collect pollen in one flower, and then they fly to another flower, and they also collect pollen in that flower, and they repeat that process several times. And so what happens when they are doing that is that they transfer pollen from one flower to the other, and that is a process called pollination. Have you ever heard that word before? Mm -hmm. Well, so pollination is the process of transferring pollen from one flower to another flower, and after that happens, um, uh, they, bees help plants reproduce. And so what happens is that flowers end up producing fruits. Or, can I need a volunteer who would like to come in front? Yes. Do you want to come in okay. So, this is a flower. This is going to represent the flower that has pollen inside. Okay? And we're going to try different structures uh, to collect this pollen that is inside the flower. So, she's going to use this wire to try to collect the pollen inside the flower. Okay. Can you show her? Did you collect a lot of pollen? Now, right? Can you see? There is a tiny, tiny bit of powder, a pollen powder in that water. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 Now we're going to just use a structure that has more hairs. Okay? And she's going to try to collect the pollen inside the flower. Just going to get more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you see? Here's a lot more pollen. So bees can actually collect much more pollen if they have hairs. Okay. And then this last structure has even more hairs. Okay? And we're going to see what happens. Okay. okay. So she's getting much more pollen. So the hairs, is, the hairs are the structures that really help bees to collect the pollen from the flowers. Okay, so let's summarize what we have talked about today. We learned that bees are very diverse. There are about 20,000 species of bees worldwide, 3,500 species of bees in the U.S., and 450 species in New York State. We also learned that bees come in different sizes and different colors. Bees can be as minute as a pinhead, but they can be as large as six inches long. But most importantly, what I want you to remember is that bees have a very important ecological role. They are the most important pollinators of plants, and they pollinate 35% of our food. Imagine a world without bees. We wouldn't be able to eat cherries, we wouldn't be able to eat apples, uh, coffee, a lot of the vegetables that we eat wouldn't be available for us. So what you can do to help conserve bees is to have several flowering plants in your garden that can provide food for bees, that means that can provide nectar and pollen for them. 
and if you can help feeding them, you're helping conserving them.